Hey guys, this is really wild. We've had months with no Android watches and now I have two launching on exactly the same day from the same company, Cospet. We're going to look at the uh, Cospet Prime S, a budget $100 Android watch, and the Cospet Optimus 2, a high-end, top-of-the-line flagship $200 watch. Whichever review you're watching right now, look around, because the other one is going up at the same time. Have fun! Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. We are a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com. That's my IMEI number under there. We are going to unbox today the flagship of flagship watches. This will be what sails us through the holiday season 2021. New technology. You're going to love it. Optimus 2 from Cospet. It's expensive. It's the Ferrari of the watches, but it's worth it. Let's dive in and take a look. Inside here is the watch itself, and it's available in a very special release from Banggood. These guys are doing kind of a world premiere right now, and I love it. They're calling it a summer prime sale, but it's an Optimus, not a, a prime. <laughs> they are really working to get Optimus Prime out of this somehow. Anyway, about a couple of hundred bucks. It's in flash sale. I don't know if I can beat that price. If I can, I'm definitely going to have coupon in the show notes for you. And, of course, we will track the best price uh, possible throughout the year as you get ready to buy on Black Friday or whatever day it happens to be you're watching this. So the Optimus 2 is a dual-mode, dual-chip watch. And what does all that mean? Oh, my gosh, this is tiny print. All right. It means that you have two different processors in there, one to handle all the heavy load of the Android operating system. Let me turn that around so we don't see it in the back there. And the other, uh, the other is to handle a lot of the functions like your heart rate and, and your fitness and your watch faces and stuff. And so they're going to be combined together in this watch in a very unique way that's going to allow for a trade-off between the two. And you're going to see that. We already saw it in the premiere of the uh, Pri uh, Prime S. There are so many guys. I'm really straining to keep it all in my head. The Prime S had uh, the two processor concept. Different set of uh, chips here, but uh, definitely the same kind of an idea. We're looking at an octa-core uh, processor with four gigabytes of uh, RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage and running Android 10. Now you can see why it's a $200 phone as opposed to a $100 phone that you get with the Prime S, which was Android 9, one gigabyte, 16 gigabytes, and I don't know, four cores, two cores. Anyway, smaller processors. Uh, but they both now have this blood oxygen monitor capability and a few other goodies. So take a look at the specs here, and um, we'll move on. There's a lot of other reviewers who are going to harp on the specs and capabilities. What I like to do is jump in and see the functions and the usability of the watch. Inside the box now, and this puppy's really packed in here, i got to take out this inner box, and... It's kind of glued together, but you can push it up and reveal the hidden surprise. Little Easter egg for you. We're going to take the strap out and reveal the uh, extra power bank. So it ships with a power bank attached, not attached, because there's a plastic to keep it from doing that, but attach a bull to the back of the watch to give it extra power. So think about this. We've got a new technology uh, watch that's using special chips, dual type processes, that you can flip this thing into a low power mode for normal use uh, and bring it back into Android for your heavy use, like YouTube playing or things things like that, uh, but in the meantime, um, you can get longer battery life, and they give you an extra power bank to go along with it. I pulled off the covers. You want to check that. Also, make sure you... Whoa! Look at that. Wow! Hey, just like the original Prime 2, the Optimus 2 has a flippable camera on the top that 
has something else in here. Yep, a flash. Yeah, or flashlight. We can actually use it for that. So now you've got this higher megapixel camera that can take out facing pictures or selfies simply by flipping it up and what I was going to mention is you want to look and make sure there's no cover over that and there's not but be careful don't try to pry something off we've seen some guys scratch up their cameras really bad it's a plastic lens on here or cover over the lens so careful with that you got a couple of buttons on the side it, yeah I know it's kind of thick it's actually thinner than some of them, but um, it's getting on the thicker side because it's got a beefy battery in it as well as this. Here's where the SIM card is, not on the back anymore. They're moving it over to the side. And uh, this one, you don't need the tool to get into. So if you're one of those folks who wants to uh, basically... See, I didn't cut them specially for this video. Uh, wants to uh, trade your SIM card from your phone over here to your watch to go out for a run and still have access to your phone number and text and everything because you know Android watches they don't Bluetooth connect for phone calling to a phone so you could take that sim out put it in here really easily no tool required on this end you may need a, a prod thing on your other end to to do it but uh, this on the phone on the watch end you're okay looks like you got a microphone down there and the speaker in this one gee I don't know I guess we'll discover it when we try to test it out. Um, yeah, you ready to turn it on? All right, I'll turn it on, but I got more things to show you. Top button on this one is the power button. Bottom is the back. It's reversed on the Prime S, as you saw in that video. And while it's booting up, let's get out the little booklet that says Cospet Watch You Want. It's the watch you want. We've got a screen protector. It already comes with one, but there's an extra one. You've got this little card that comes with it. Did you hear that? Nice and loud, this one. Okay. Kind of a thank you letter from Martin, the founder. And then the Optimus 2 brochure with all of the specs in it. Color picture showing you the buttons. Charging the heart rate sensor, there's uh, been a, a shift now in those sensors. Uh, up until now, we've always had just a um, green sensor on the back for getting your heart rate. And this one and the Prime S, both are coming with uh, green sen uh, red sensors in there as well as this green ones for doing the um, blood oxygen. This is the QR code for the brand new app GAO GaoFit. Gaofit is what it tethers to instead of the Y Watch 2 app. It's by the same Y We, We, Y, well, We. It's the same company that, <laughs> that does the firm. I'm so sorry for butchering that. Uh, we, well, anyway, uh, y, W I I, We, We Watch 2 is the app that it normally tethers with. And now we're tethering with Gaofit instead. So it's a brand new app. It's pretty limited. I did a pretty extensive review of the app in the um, Prime S video. So check that one out to get more details on it. It's a work in progress, needs a lot of more updating, especially with regard to your fitness activities. But it is uh, the next generation, I guess, of uh, tethering apps for these devices and it will support giving you your blood oxygen readings transferred over to the app there we go there's the booklet the watch is up in its first watch face and inside the accessories box simple stuff you got a couple of wires and a screwdriver I'm not sure why you need the screwdriver maybe they put it in to open this figuring uh, you need it because you definitely are not going to take the screws off uh, but you get this little baby screwdriver you get a charging uh, four point charging connector here that goes on that way okay and it's sturdy enough to actually almost you didn't see that almost hold the watch it's a heavy watch too and then you got another cable which is your standard um, micro USB that you'll use look at that that's the red diodes calibrating oh I love it um, you plug it in the charging dock and it'll charge the dock and then you can of course slap that onto the back of the watch okay let's begin Wow okay it went into the uh, watch 
face mode. There we go. Let's begin the overall review of this one. To get you started, see it's about to fade out on me, I want to immediately come over here to settings. I want to go into my display and I want to increase my screen timeout to something reasonable, say 10 minutes. Then we can actually talk story about this whole thing. So this is your opening page, your watch face. And a little bit different you're going to see uh, from the layout of these new Android uh, watches with the dual chips and the heart rate sensor and the blood oxygen sensor and all of that. They, they look different from the beginning. You don't have a circle around the edge showing you your power level. It's down here. That's your Bluetooth. That's your SIM. Uh, all those th things are there. Here we've got um, our brightness control. So you can see what it's like dim, just barely on, about middle, and of course full bright is really, it washes out. So I'm going to run it for you at about that level. Let's do that one. This is a do not disturb quiet mode. We may as well leave it off. Uh, this is the twist your wrist to see your hand. Let's see your hand. Whoa, yeah, there's my hand. To see the watch. It lights up the watch face, okay? This, uh, the dual arrows here is for cellular data. Airplane mode, Bluetooth, of course, is down here. You use for tethering to your app uh, for data and uh, also for Bluetooth headphones if you're going to be putting music in here and listening to them. And Wi-Fi I already have on and have set up. This is that system mode thing that's unique now to these watches. And to give you a quick look at it, it's in Android mode right now, which means it's the full flavored, full processor system. I touch it, I'll switch over to um, what they call a light mode. And once we get to the Play Store, I'm going to show you a little bit about that, how it uh, changes things. But its stake to claim is to give you longer battery life, lower power uh, usage, and really improve the overall performance. Same thing with the cleanup. I really don't know what it does in the background, but every now and then come up and touch it, especially if it gets sluggish or anything, and that's all from here. When we go that way, we get to our notifications. Google Play Protect is checking all of the apps to make sure they're safe, which is good to know. Uh, and it'll show you any notifications the watch has to tell you, and uh, also whatever's coming pushed to you from the phone, if you have that feature set up on your phone. When you go up, you're getting into your pedometer stuff, step count, calories burned, distance travel, dates, history, so forth. And one more gets you to a music player. One more will get you to weather when you're all set up. You pretty much need to be on Wi-Fi. You got to have your GPS going. You got to rub your fingers together and touch the top of your head before it's going to connect and give you weather. It's a little tricky. Uh, maybe it'll improve over time, but it's got it's running three or four different gps -y kind of you know, location services. So it has to first find out if you're in Russia, China, Siberia, <laughs> uh, Hawaii, United States, where you are. And then it can, uh, from that knowledge of your location, it can tune into which system it's going to use. Then it has to download the location of the satellites. It just gets really complex. Be patient is what I got to say. When you get into your app drawer and one more tab over gets you to your fitness area, this is just to start these exercises, not to configure them. You can figure them over here. Real quick look through. You've got phone contacts and SMS that relate to your communications. You have a SIM card you put in here. It does not Bluetooth tether. None of these watches do to your phone to be able to make and receive calls that come to your phone on your watch. It doesn't do that. Yeah, wish it did. We all wish it did. Doesn't do that. You got to have a separate SIM card. Uh, settings, uh, kind of new. Um, you got your heart rate, blood oxygen, sleep, and breath training. These are kind of all using new sensor technology in the back. It's a, a, a lot different display than it has been with red and green diodes going on there. And first time we've seen sleep monitoring on the watch. It will track you if you wear it to bed and let you know what your last night's sleep information was. Score, light, deep, all of that. And breath training is a breathe in, breathe out type of an exercise. It won't even start until it gets your heart rate because it actually gives you a feedback report at the end on how well you did in lowering your heart rate just through focused breathing, okay? 
Um, heart rate is heart rate. Same thing we've already seen. Browsers. The camera, we're going to, well, we can play with that right now. Why not? Here we go. I'm coming into camera, and there it is, upside down. You notice that, but that's all right. I could touch that button, twist it to right side up. There's my hand. Uh, it's on the top. So if I want to come over here where I don't have as much backlighting and take a quick picture, bloom, you heard that. I can do that. I can bring the picture up. I can show it to you. I can double tap on it and zoom way in. Yeah, and back out again. Camera does not support, I mean, the watch does not support pinch and zoom. And it's only one level of double tap. So, yeah, you're... Uh, you're kind of restricted. It, it, in, in a sense, it's a little step backward in the app itself. But remember, it's an Android watch, so you can put all kinds of third-party apps on here. And we've already covered way back with the uh, Genesis watch, which had a camera at the top. We went through a whole bunch of apps, um, camera apps, and played with those. So if you want to learn more, you can do that. You have more things that you can do here. You tap this, and you can turn on the flash, whatnot. And the flash is actually right there. It's a little diode-type thing. You can switch from... Uh, camera to video and you have some other settings that you can get into with more options can you see all that against the backlink yeah we'll we'll try to go deeper into camera in a different video but just for now it's there it's really cool it's a uh, high resolution 12 megapixel you rotate it like that to take the front picture and of course you can flip the screen up and down so that you're upright for your face and other direction for landscape and the flash works uh, on here as well you can even turn it on when you're shooting video at night so you can take uh, videos of creepy crawlers on the ground in the nighttime all righty we are back at camera gallery is where you show those pictures you got a calendar very lame uh, basic alarms basic music player nothing changed there the sound recorder is pretty simple however I do want to show you how loud this one is. It's got a great speaker. It's one of the loudest Android watches I've ever heard. And I can stop that. I can save it. I can check mark it. I can slide over and I can play it. I do want to show you how loud this one is. It's got a great speaker. It's one of the loudest Android watches I've ever heard. Now, I'm really, really loud when I'm talking and I'm right next to the uh, camera. So it's louder than it sounds probably <laughs> because of how the... Audios manage. File manager is where you get into your uh, storage, and of course, you can access your files. All that has not changed from other Android, so I'm not spending a lot of time uh, going through that. Weather is basically the same. Fitness, we do want to take a look at. We're talking the app itself, not when you swipe over here to these things, which are part of the fitness app, but all you can do is launch into one of these activities. It's not the full thing. So go into the app listing, find fitness, and go in there. When you get in, you'll see you have those same uh, activities listed, but in kind of a card format. And on any one of these, you can tap a little wheel here, and you can set a uh, an alarm for you for distance time calories or in the case of something like a walk or a run you also have distance that you can add to it that's here then if you slide over one tab you'll get the results of all the activities you've done so far that's what I want to go into but a reminder that if you slide one more time you get this toggle on off for using GPS positioning it's default is off so make sure if you're going to use fitness to come in here and turn it on and be in the Android mode um, and you'll be able to uh, get this all set up properly now here we go in terms of um, some of the activities that you see I've got a, a bike and, and a walk just to show you a little bit about different kind of data collected when you go in here you notice it hasn't quite translated the month yet um, little little glitch you got the date and time it happened though Basically, it's covering in kilometers, not in miles, distance, your time, your heart rate uh, average, I believe it is, calories burned, your speed in kilometers per hour, and so forth. Then you have a historical track that you can dive into. I'll show you one of those in a minute. They are uh, with the Google Map, and it's from the GPS tracking. Uh, that's 
going to show up here in the walk. A walk is a little smaller and easier to show you. So here I've got the data from a walk. Again, the month is off. We've got the time, the step count now. So a pedometer step count, which is different than a GPS track, two different ways of doing this now. You've got your distance traveled in kilometers, heart rate, calories burned, your speed in kilometers per hour, right? And your pace uh, in kilometers. Now, when you go into this historical track thing, you can drill down into the Google Maps and zoom in. Oh yeah, there's no pinch and zoom on this watch, so you zoom in by double tapping. There, okay. You can see the whole layout of the walk and all the different places you went. You can just zoom and zoom and zoom. What you can't do well, is zoom out. You have the plus and I think the minus is down here. If I press and hold and make it a square screen, it doesn't change and I can't get to the minus. So one of the issues I've come into is that once you go in, the only way to go out is to go back and go back into the historical track again. But that's a quick overview of the fitness app and how it works. You cannot yet transfer the data to the app, so the results only live in the watch. Hopefully that'll be fixed soon. Then we got your overall desktop settings where you can select the dial, change the menu style, whether you like it like that, like that, or a few of them in a line, or you like your apps around a clock. When in these two, you don't have the names of them, so you have to learn the icons, but uh, these will give you uh, the names of them as well. You've got, you notice I changed on us here, right? And we were way down here in the file manager, fitness and desktop settings, where we also have um, the menu style and the switch style, which is how it's going to move when you slide slide it. So I just changed that for us. Your basic Google, you know, for your trigger word and searches and stuff, the Google Play Store is in here and Google Maps are there. Make sure those are all updated. Go through that whole setup uh, process to make sure you, you, you've, you've done everything right in these things, including an invisible one called Google Play Services has been updated properly. Optimization, we've seen that on some of these other watches. This is where, pay attention now, if you put in third-party apps and you're frustrated because they quit every time the screen goes black and they need to run in the background, this is where you fix that. You hit clean task, make sure that's turned on, tap here, and any third-party apps will show up here, turn them off. Turn them off so they are not disabled automatically by the watch to save power. You have your screen lock and face unlock and all the other kind of things, including system work mode, which should be on normal most of the time unless you're playing games that are sluggish. Really, just use normal. It's way, way better. Even though you got a big octa-core thing going on, you don't need to, you know, you don't need to spend that much energy on a watch. Uh, the watch face store, this is the same thing if you press and hold your watch faces and scroll to the end. These are odd little watch faces that you could select and download and add to your watch if you want to. I'll add that little one there and it's done. And when I exit here and I exit there, there's that watch face that we just added in the stream of all the other faces that were there. Okay. An app store is sort of like a watch face store, but it's got selected apps, not many. Facebook and WhatsApp are in here, but other things are like a calculator and a, and a, a flashlight, little trinket kind of apps you want to add. Your assistant, this is where you're going to connect to your phone, your your, your app on your phone. The, the GalFit uh, app, the new one that is uh, replacing the Y Watch 2, We Watch 2, WII Watch 2 app. Um, which is a pretty lame app. It's not that good yet, uh, but that's how you would connect to it. And once you're connected, you have remote capture, music control, find your device. Those kind of things can happen. Face unlock. This, you can get to it quickly if you need to, um, but you actually set that whole thing up in the other place where you have to first put in a password in case the face thing doesn't work. You could get in with your your drawing or your numbers or whatever. And then they give you a token uh, calculator in here that you can 
do things with if you want to. And it's pretty decent. Good sized digits, commas, decimal points. All that's there too. That's the apps for this watch. And all of those are running under the uh, Android processor in Android mode. But when you come in here to system mode now and change it, which is really, really quick what it's basically doing in the background, we switch to light mode. Now when you come up here and you slide over, look, first of all, we lost that center section that had all of the uh, switches and things for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and airplane and all of that. That's gone. You have the system mode and the cleanup thing, and we're in the light mode now. And what really is interesting is when you go over here to the app drawer, okay, we've got the phone contact and texting. We've got your heart information and sleep time. We've got a calculator and alarms, a music player, your basic fitness, the assistant, you know, to do the stuff back and forth with your phone, remote capture and whatnot, and Bluetooth for connecting it. And that is it. That's all you have. You do have the fitness workout stuff and the fitness app, so you can set that all up. But you've lost all the other stuff. Not really lost it, suppressed it. It's sleeping. It's not available to you in this energy level. If weather's not there now. Yeah, it's really, really different. But of course, you go back to system mode and switch it back to Android. And once it flips over here to Android mode, come back up. Now you got your full circle back. We're in Android mode. Come down here, go over, and you've got all of the apps that you had before working. So it's a compromise for you to be able to try and have your best battery life for the things they predict you're going to use the most and the heavy intensive stuff you can switch over to in Android mode and use that. What I prefer is to run it as much as possible in the light mode. Oh, by the way, make sure that you are in the Android mode before you uh, switch over. I'm sorry, this one. Uh, because up here, you'll notice you can switch the mode, but you don't have the circle square thing. So you can't flip back and forth. You can only do that in Android mode. So I like to make sure I'm in circle mode or whatever works for you. Uh, but circle mode works really best for all of the typical stuff that you're going to be using. Set that up before you go into the, uh, the light mode, okay? Now, for the last thing, let's take a look at these new watch faces that have been installed here. Since it's a brand new watch, we've got some new creations. It looks like they're following kind of an Avengers theme and a Ferrari theme. Uh, this is a fun one. We saw that one already on the uh, Prime S because it has a special hot button at the top that will launch the camera. And you can take pictures with it as well. This... Um, Red and white theme kind of permeates everything. You've got that one. There aren't a whole lot, but they're uh, pretty nice. The uh, ones that they've got orange, I guess. It's more of an orange. Some of them are red. Wow. Okay. I didn't know I had that one in here. There's the camera launching. Okay, I think that's one of Alrod's faces. Interesting. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to show you some Alrod stuff uh, coming up here in a minute as well. Here's another one. We've been playing back and forth with different faces, and he's got a special treat for you guys. Uh, so we'll, we'll definitely want to show you the faces that he's created to celebrate uh, these new watches with uh, fun cameras on them to make them more efficient for using them for photography. Oh, that's an interesting reveal watch. Look at that. All right. It's showing the hour actually in a little window. Huh. I don't think I've seen that one before. Now we're getting into some former stock ones. These have been around for ages. That one and that one. There's the Cospet uh, fine detail one. That looks great when you're wearing this and want a dressy watch face. Now, are you ready? These are uh, some of Alrod's faces. This is one that he has made, and he premiered it on the, um, the, the Prime S watch. If you watch that review, you'll see he, he showed us this one. This is a, uh, a premium face that when you touch the upper circle will launch into a camera, 
and when you touch the bottom circle will launch into the um, gallery so you can go back and take a look at the pictures that you shot if you want to so really a, a camera focused photography focused face you wouldn't even know it there's no indication you just have to know that those buttons are there that's one of his premium ones Mm, that's that uh, one that we downloaded already, remember, from the uh, the App Store or the Face Store. And then there's this one. This is one that he also premiered on the Prime S, which is a uh, free face. This is not a premium one. You can get this directly from him. We'll have the links in the show notes, of course. And like the other one, it's got a hot spot. And, of course, it's in that big circle in the middle. And, of course, it launches the camera. Come on, you. Got to hit it just right. And there we are. We're on the, on the camera right there. Uh, so it works well on this watch. It works well on any Android watch. It's got a, at least one camera. And, of course, once you're in the camera app, you can flip between two cameras if you have a front-facing one. This one just has the camera module, so that's all you need. Now, first time seen on any watch, this watch in particular, we have this face, too. And uh, this is another premium face. It, like the other one, uh, has a hot spot here for launching the camera. I keep hitting it wrong. It's a little bit above the, it's like right on the digital numbers will launch the camera, and right on the uh, bottom will launch the gallery. So you have, again, combination there. So we got a bunch of great watch faces here. A reminder, when you install new ones, go all the way to the end down here and hit that little round arrow. It'll re calibrate all of the directory of faces and put you right back at the very first one. Now at this point I'm going to skip going into the tethering app for this. I did a really really deep detailed overview uh, of the app on the review of the Prime S. So check that review out if you want to get into the details of the tethering app. I will tell you that it's not that great of an app. It uh, it needs a lot of work, but it does give you the basic um, heart rate and um, step count kind of stuff, uh, you know, that you, that you need and some controls that you can do back and forth between your phone and the watch. So this is what it looks like on. It is a tad bit on the thick side. Uh, but it is a, a full Android watch with this really uh, new, creative, sort of like the Prime 2 on steroids. It's a camera module with a flash, and it is available from Banggood in their kind of a world release premiere thing. They're calling it a Prime sale for this, but it's the Cospet Optimus 2, and we're looking at about 200 bucks. Check the show notes. I've got a special link to a coupon page where they constantly are updating coupons, and sometimes they can give me coupons that are lower than the customer's flash sale. So I don't know on this one. I'm going to try. We might be able to get it 10 or 20 bucks lower, but still that's a good introductory price uh, for such a nice watch you've been watching smartwatch ticks we really appreciate you being here and thanks for sticking with it all the way through and we'll see you again soon